Hi, my name is Jeff Lund. I'm a Director of Product Management in the IoT Business Unit. And I'm here today to talk to you about the network you know and the scale to take it anywhere. So one thing we've seen at Cisco is we have had tens of thousands of customers across all different sorts of industries uh, coming to us with a common theme, which is that every industry is going through digital transformation. Everything is getting connected. So the networks that historically have lived within the enterprise space, within the carpeted space, within branches, within data centers, is being pushed out into every nook and cranny of the business. So can you imagine if you're a retailer, that might mean things like having connectivity and visibility into what's going on inside of your warehouse or inside of the parking lots outside of your, your facilities or in the manufacturing plants to make all those products or the transportation systems that are delivering those products. In every industry, there's this push towards digital transformation because companies are looking to get more insight into what's happening in their environment to collect more data so they can make better decisions, deliver higher quality products, reduce their operating costs, improve their customer experience. And so as that's happening, what you see is the networks are being pushed into more and more challenging environments. And so as you move outside of the confines of a data center or an enterprise, Right, you find that the temperature ranges are much more extreme. Things might have to live outside where it's very cold or it becomes very hot or it's very humid or it's on a moving vehicle where there's various shock and vibrations that come into play. To play. It could be someplace where there's exposed to water, it's exposed to dust. And of course, you also have different requirements in terms of industry certifications. If you're running in part of the electric grid or you're running as part of a transportation system, there's all these specialized requirements that have to be met on your products. And of course, the cost of fixing failures becomes much more expensive. It's much more difficult to go service a product that's out in some remote location where it might be very expensive to visit. It might require multiple people for safety reasons. And so you need a network that's built to handle those uh, very harsh and severe requirements. And so that's what we do in the IoT BU. So as part of Cisco, we leverage the technology that's in all the rest of Cisco. So all of the switching technology, the routing technology, the wireless technology, the security that you've come to know and trust in the enterprise. And we've customized it for use in these harsh industrial environments. So it's purpose built to survive and thrive in very difficult environments. So we've made sure that it has all the right industry certifications. It meets all the right environmental um, certifications and requirements and still delivers all the value that you look for from Cisco infrastructure. So the ability to extend um, intent-based networking down to the network edge, ability to extract data, process it locally, so have edge intelligence to take that data and move it securely, not only across the industrial environment, but up through the rest of your enterprise. So deliver that into the applications where you're looking to do analytics, machine learning, other analyses to help you reduce cost and increase efficiency. And because it's built on top of the same heritage as the rest of Cisco technology, we're able to integrate that seamlessly throughout the enterprise. So it's not just an isolated industrial network. It's a seamless part of your overall network fabric. So the same management tools, the same security policies that you have in the enterprise, you can extend down into the industrial edge. So one common network fabric managed through a common set of tools with a common set of security policies. And what I want to do now is just take a few minutes to, to look at some industries where this technology is being applied and give you some ideas of how it fits. So let me start by talking about the electric grid. So obviously all of us have electric grids. Grid, electric grid powers kind of the modern world around us. Without electricity, everything stops whether it's delivery of water, um, you know, delivery of the internet, everything is, is fundamentally connected to the grid. And so if you think about where can networking extend, right, it really goes everywhere. It's from the beginning of where utilities are generating power. It's all through the transmission and distribution system, all the way down to our individual homes, monitoring our usage of electricity or helping to curtail our usage during times of severe stress. And what we're seeing is that utilities are under incredible pressure to have more reliable grids, right? To be able to understand what's happening on the grid and keep it running, right? And at the same time, securing it against increased cyber threats. 
And so I think you know, all of us are familiar with, I think, various you know, blackouts or attacks that you might read about or overloads in the grid. Obviously, we had the recent unfortunate um, situation in Texas. And what you see is there's you know, market drivers, regulatory drivers, technical drivers that are moving utilities to put more and more devices um, into the field that they want to be able to securely connect at scale. And I've got two keywords highlighted there, scale and cybersecurity. Because you think about this, we're not talking about thousands of devices or even tens of thousands of devices. In many cases, it's millions of devices. For example, we recently have done a project with a utility that basically served an entire country or the majority of a country where collectively there's tens of thousands of substations where they want to put uh, networking, both switching and routing, be able to manage and monitor and control those to enhance the reliability of the grid. Right? So it's really about how do I provide more reliable service at lower cost that's secure, that lets me incorporate more renewables into the grid so that I can reduce my carbon footprint and become more energy independent. At the same time, there's many different uh, pressures to change the business model, to have the ability for consumers to generate their own power and incorporate that into the grid, be compensated for that generation. All of that requires a secure network that can extend throughout the, entire, the entirety of the utility. So taking their Cisco network in the enterprise and extending it out into the field. Maybe a, a slightly smaller in scale, but still incredibly large scale application is digitizing the roadways of a state. So again, if you think about all the infrastructure, all the transportation infrastructure around this, right, there's incredible economic costs and safety impacts to having inefficiencies and lack of visibility into that infrastructure. So again, as you start to look around you, you see that there's an incredible number of places or opportunities to add intelligence, to add devices and connectivity to those devices. Whether it's things like pedestrian safety of crosswalks and various sensors and interconnects to the traffic lights and the walk signals, controlling the street lighting so you can both dim the lighting to reduce your energy load when there's no traffic on the street to reduce the cost of providing that street lighting but also increase the brightness when there is traffic or when there's events or if there's safety incidents, you know, there's toll booths, there's switching at intersections, there's weather signals, there's signage, right? Again, an enormous number of devices that can be connected. So again, the same, similar theme, it's really about secure connectivity at scale and being able to manage that as part of the fabric of your Cisco enterprise network. So just two quick examples. The first is actually from a, it's actually a country level, but it's a, a country where they were looking to get um, more efficiency out of the roadway, right? Increase the safety, increase the throughput of traffic. And by doing that, or to enable that, they deployed a very large number of cameras and sensors um, throughout their roadways, right? So it was 70,000 sensors and 6,500 cameras all connected to a fiber optic network managed with Cisco industrial switches and DNAC. Uh, second example below is from a state um, here in the, in the US, where again, it's a very high scale. So 16,000 traffic intersections, you have 79,000 miles of roadway. Um, and what you're looking to do in that case is again, digitize all of these intersections, be able to provide finer grain control, better visibility into what's happening at the intersection, uh, reduce accidents, you know, increase the throughput of the roadway, increase safety. It's leveraging a network called FirstNet, which is a LTE network built out by AT&T here in the US that's available to first responders and in critical infrastructure. So the idea is when there is some you know, catastrophe, some uh, event that would put stress on the LTE network, you wanna be sure that first responders have priority access and FirstNet gives them that. And leveraging again, the Cisco technologies that we have um, throughout the enterprise, we're able to offer FirstNet cellular modems that work in our industrial router platforms. Now, well, the first two examples were very industry centric, right? very focused on particular verticals, um, you know, very industrialized verticals, utilities and roadways. And if you think about this, this general need applies to every business, right? Wherever you are, whatever industry you're in, you have assets outside of your carpeted space, right? 
So you might have, you know, even in your building, right, when we're all allowed to go back into buildings, you'll see there's video cameras in the parking lot. Maybe there's outdoor Wi-Fi that you provide to your employees while they're um, having lunch outside. You, know, you have a building management system that is has machinery in it that you want to, that your contractors want to be able to remotely monitor and control so they can increase the efficiency of your building. Um, you have EV charging stations. Right? You have many, many different places where you have value you can gain by extending your network and having access to more data. And in all those cases, you can take the network that you know, and take the Cisco enterprise network and extend that to those ruggedized spaces, right? So leverage the same technologies that you have indoors and extend those outdoors, right? So extend your network fabric, manage them as part of that fabric, whether it's a switch or a router, be able to bring all the analytics that you have from DNAC up into your, from your enterprise into your industrial devices to so understand, for example, what cameras are connected to those industrial switches, get that telemetry data, being able to secure it. That's very important. So you can leverage technologies like StealthWatch, but also IoT centric technologies. So you can look to see what are those um, endpoints connected into your network? Are they potentially vulnerable? You know, what provision of firmware are they running? What are they? So you can then figure out uh, if they should be connected to your network or if they're behaving in some unexpected way. Right. So I think the key point I want to make is that it's not, um, you know, it's not just about these very, I don't know, I'll call them esoteric, even though they're very critical, but you know, it's not just about, say, esoteric industrialized applications. They're really every application, every business has the need to extend their network. Right. We see this again with tens of thousands of customers who work with around the world with this common theme of extending connectivity. And that's what, um, that's what we are enabling through this unified platform. So just to summarize, again, as I said, it's really everybody that, that's exposed to this. I, I, I hope, I assume that all of your businesses, all of you are seeing that, right? That your enterprise is extending outside of its traditional four walls um, and going out into these new ruggedized spaces and what's unique about Cisco, how we can help our customers, is that we can offer you one unified experience to do that. So historically, industrial networks, which we sometimes call OT or operational technology networks, and IT networks have been separate, right? Separately managed, separately built, separately maintained. Um, and what that's meant is that it's been very difficult to share information between those networks, right? It's expensive to do integrations. Uh, you don't get a lot of reuse of network technologies. You're not leveraging the skills and expertise of your IT department to manage and, and secure those networks. So you've had you know, security vulnerabilities or, or gaps in your network where potentially bad actors could come in. And what we're doing by offering this unified platform is letting you take the network that you know and trust and take it everywhere. So extend it out into the rest of your business. And if you're interested in learning more, which I hope you are, there's a number of other virtual sessions that you can attend as part of Cisco Live. Um, some are breakouts, some are demos, so you can hear about different technologies, how you can extend intent-based networking into the rest of your network, uh, why industrial IoT is so cool, which hopefully you've got a little taste of that now. Um, talk about some of the evolution we have for access technologies into industrial IoT. And then see some examples, some practical examples of both routing and switching being applied to industrial context in those last two sessions. So again, thank you for your time in attending today's session. I hope you have a good Cisco Live and that this has been valuable for you. Thank you.